uh, welcome. Uh, so nice to see uh, everyone together, kids, the adults. Um, so uh, we're going to have a good program today. We've got a lot of things on the schedule. Uh, as you can see at the front, we have a lot of people that are going to get baptized today, a lot from the youth and also some uh, adults as well. Uh, so that's something that we should give thanks and give glory to God for um, doing in our church and our youth ministry and working in people's hearts that they would, um, you know, take up that decision to be baptized today. So that's a great thing uh, to give God thanks for. Um, so, yeah, just before we start today, um, I just wanted to share like a very quick word with you, um, something that was kind of on my heart as I was reflecting about the importance of what actually happened today. Um, so Jesus, um, he chose to take up the cross, right? Um, it wasn't something that was forced upon him by any man or it wasn't something that, um, you know, it was nothing that he was forced into. He chose to take up the cross. That was his decision, something that he chose to follow through with. And so the Bible even says that he lays down his life on his own accord. Um, and as I was reading that, I'm just thinking, and it's this, the greatest act of suffering that has ever been shown in this world, this act of love that was poured out for people that were so undeserving of his love like us, um, you know, it kind of caused me to question and to think, you know, how did Jesus endure this? Um, and so when I was reading Hebrews um, 12, um, chapter 12, verse 2, um, I'll just read it out for you guys quickly. Um, Hebrews 12, 2 says, um, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Um, so as I was reading this, um, we can find the answer to that question. It says that he endured the cross for joy, for the joy that was set before him. And so when I look at what he, he did on that cross, the pain, the suffering that he went through, the, um, the humiliation, the ridicule that he went through, everything, the whole process of what happened on that cross, Jesus did all of that and he endured all of that suffering for joy. Um, and so, you know, at any given moment in that time, he could, have, um, he could have called on God the Father to rescue him or to save him from that, but he didn't, he chose um, to suffer that pain he chose to endure for joy and so God's intentions um, you know God's intentions that this joy set before Jesus this power that enabled him that um, to kind of endure that pain um, he that gave him the power to endure this suffering um, that joy and that in that outpouring of love, God also wants that joy um, to be our own joy. And so in John chapter 15, I don't know what verse it is specifically, but it says, uh, Jesus says there that I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete, that your joy may be full. Um, so God wants us to have that joy as well. Um, and so in this resurrection, there is, in the resurrection of Jesus, there is real power and there is real joy, that power that can kind of, that changes and affects our life and how we live our lives as Christians today. Um, so I just wanted to share that before we get started. Um, I just want to ask if we can go into a time of prayer right now, um, just kind of reflecting on this word, reflecting on this day, um, what Christ has done for us on this cross um, how powerful it is, um, the sacrifice, the love, how much of a loving father we have that he, to pursue us, that he would sacrifice his own son, that blood that was poured out for every single one of us. Um, so yeah, let's just take time to pray individually um, and then I'll lead in prayer. Thank you, Lord. 
Dear God, I just want to thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. I want to thank you for um, allowing all of us to gather here today in your presence, Lord, on this special day, Lord, that we remember um, the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you so much, God, that you loved us so much that even though we were such undeserving people, Lord, that you sent your son from heaven to come and to carry this, um, to bear this burden, this weight of all of humanity's sins, Lord, so that we would be able to have this relationship with you, Lord. We would be able to call you Father, that we have this by believing in you, by believing in this sacrifice that Christ has made on that cross, that we have this ability to have eternal life with you, to spend eternal life with you, Lord, singing praises and being with you, Lord. And I thank you that Christ not only suffered for us, Lord, but that he was, he defeated death, Lord, that he resurrected. He didn't stay dead, but he resurrected and he came back to life, Lord. He ascended back into heaven. And Lord, I thank you that even after this, you sent your Holy Spirit, you poured down your Holy Spirit on all of us, Lord, your Holy Spirit that dwells and lives within us, Lord. And I thank you for everything that you've done, the grace and the mercy that you poured out on that cross, Lord, that we would be able to stand here today we would be able to declare your name to have a relationship with you lord to be with you lord to know that you are with us that you keep us you guide us you protect us all the days of our lives lord that you forgive us even when we are not forgiving of any mercy lord you continue to hold us you continue to protect us to guide us even as we fall lord you continue to pick us up you refine us you work in us lord to help us to be this image this creation that you designed for us to be Lord I pray that you would continue to work in our lives that you would help us to be people that glorify you with our thoughts people that glorify you with our actions with our being Lord I pray that people would see Christ reflected in all that we do Lord I pray that more and more people would know about the joy that you that we have in you Lord the joy that um that helped Christ, that gave Christ the power to endure that cross, this hope that he had, Lord. I pray that we would be filled with this joy. We would be filled with your love. We would be filled with love that overflows, Lord. And I pray that you would work in the, in the hearts and in the minds of every single person in this room, Lord. I pray that you'd help us to be present. I pray that you'd, the Holy Spirit would fall afresh on every single one of us here today, Lord. I pray that we would receive this outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this room today. I pray that people would be able to be filled with this knowledge and this understanding of who you are, Lord. And that we would choose to walk and to live our lives with you every single day. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done. I pray that you would bless this service, Lord. I pray that you would bless this people getting baptized. I pray that you would continue to fill them with your love, Lord, that you would help them to know that they're making the right decision in their lives by choosing to follow you, Lord, because there's nothing greater, there's no greater privilege than being a servant of Christ, Lord. So I thank you for everything that you've done today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sorry, worship team, if you guys could come up. Uh, sorry. sorry, I couldn't see. So if everyone would like to join us in worship, please stand. We pour out our praise. We 
Um, hi again, everyone. Uh, there's a lot more faces actually now, so um, it's nice to see you guys again. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go into a time of giving soon, but before that, I just wanna share a couple of words about um, the importance of giving as Christians. And so, you know, when we give, it's not because God demands anything from us or he wants or needs anything from us, but it comes from um, a place of us wanting to show our love and our expression um, for, for God. And so it is, you know, an expression of obedience in a form, but it's also one of, of gratitude, one that wants to express their joy. And, you know, God seeks out and he recognizes those of us who worship him. And through our giving is a form of worship. Um, so I'm just going to pray for the giving and then um, the ushers can come and start taking. So, yeah, um, if we just uh, go into prayer. Um, Dear God, thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. Um, thank you for this time that we have to come here uh, as a community, as families, Lord. Your presence. Um, I pray, Lord, that you would just help us to give from uh, generously, Lord, from a heart that is cheerful and out of our joy that we would be willing to give to, your, to, to this church and to the kingdom of God, Lord. I pray that you would help us um, not to... Be not to understand that our giving is a form and an expression of our worship and our um, our joy and our love, Lord. And I pray that you would bless this giving, Lord. I pray that you would bless us as a church and as a community, Lord. Um, and I pray that you would help us to have to shape our hearts, Lord, so that our hearts would be willing um, to give back to your kingdom, Lord, and that we would have hearts that are. Um, Christ-centered and focused on you, Lord, and eyes that are looking towards you and towards heaven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, so yeah, the ushers, if you guys could come and start collecting, please.
Uh, okay, guys, um, we're going to have a couple of announcements uh, that are going to be played now. Um, so, yeah, this is the youth announcements, I think. I could just invite uh, Leggesa up to the stage um, and he's going to be sharing some of the um, other announcements. Good morning. I expected more than this for the glory of Lord. Come on, feel good. It's a very special day. Jesus has risen. We are granted a special status. You know what that is, don't you? On this day, you know it. Eternal life. A life with him, the risen king. Thank you. This is brilliant. I just welcome all of you. This is a very special week, which ended with Sunday, Jesus resurrecting. Jesus has risen. Glory to him. I welcome you, all of you, whether you are our visitors, new today to this place, the congregation, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a very special day again. We have baptism to take place on this special day. So you have a lot to witness and praise the Lord. Keep praying. Keep smiling. Keep praising the Lord. The, I don't know, there is um, evangelism which took place on last Friday, Good Friday. Uh, so many things happened. Our people were on action outside King's Cross uh, evangelizing. And I'm not sure if that is ready. The, the clip, I want to show uh, the clip, but if it is, probably it's not ready. Okay. Fantastic. When it is ready, later on, I'll remind them. Praise the Lord. We are going to continue with the next program. We are going ahead so that we don't uh, waste much time. And keep praising the Lord. And upload to the English department, the church information, to the youth who have been singing glory to the Lord. Come on. Let's thank. Thank you, Father, for this lovely morning. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to organize this event. Thank you, Father, for everything you have done for us. Father, we have program ahead of us. Holy Spirit, you intervene. You take over, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, like I said. Um, so yeah, we're going to continue with the program today, so we're going to have somebody from the youth who is teaching us the word of God, so if we could just invite Mahatam to the stage, please.
Ai, încă o dată răsăciu. How is everyone good? Okay. So today I want to talk about uh, what is Easter and uh, what Jesus did on the cross and how we can use his sacrifice to live our lives day to day. So firstly, although it's now known as Easter, uh, Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he rose again on the third day. He humbly brought himself to us and he became a human. He endured a crown of thorns being placed onto his head. He was being battered and kicked about and slapped and flogged and being nailed to a cross. However, even when he was on the cross, he was still thinking about the people as he was saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. He was watching people who murdered him and were drawing lots for his possessions and were mocking him saying that he should save himself as he is the Messiah. And he still even then was looking out for them. This is the humble and mighty God that we're serving. Today we'll talk about how we're going to use this sacrifice day to day in our lives to ensure that we're living according to his will. To honor him means to grow in a relationship with him. I'll pray and then we'll go into it. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for bringing us all here safely to praise you, Lord. I pray that whilst we're here, you help us to remember the true meaning of today and that we're here to celebrate you, Lord, for uh, resurrecting from the dead and dying to save us from our sins so that we can have eternal life with you. In your name I pray. Amen. So I want to mention four points about how we can live our lives um, every day to remember what Jesus did for us. You may come up with more yourselves, though. So okay, the four I came up with was reading your Bible or reading our Bibles day to day, uh, praying, faith, and denying ourselves. So why is it important to read our Bible? Uh, on one level, the things that we read most will stay in our head. The more we read a book or a subject or an article, the more likely we are to remember it. The types of books that we read regularly would definitely influence our lifestyles as well. If we read our Bible regularly, it's highly likely that we grow into the likeness of Christ. The more we read the Word of God, the more we know His ways and the more energy we receive to apply it into our lives. One example of this might be that we're going through a situation where we're feeling hurt or something happens in our lives that makes us ask God why, why is this happening to us? We might remember Romans chapter 8, verse 28, which says, um, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And this can give us comfort and guide us as well as correct and encourage us because when we're going through situations that we're struggling, it says that God works for the good of those who love him. And so we know that God has unconditional love for us regardless of whatever we're doing, regardless of whatever we go through. So if we keep in mind that God is always with us, then it can give us comfort and encouragement as well. Deeper than just remembering the word of God when we're struggling though, studying the Bible will give us a greater understanding of Jesus and it, fac it facilitates intimacy with him. Meaning that we learn more about God and his character and also what his expectations of us are. As he speaks to us through the reading of the Holy Bible, he tells us to seek his presence enjoy his deep love for us, honor his desires, and realize his purpose for our lives. We need the knowledge and understanding of the word of God for this, and to give time to read and study his word. How are we going to live as Christians if we don't know what our purpose is and what we're called to do? The second point that I thought of was prayer, and praying is important because it's our way of communicating with God. In addition to this, God also wants to have fellowship with us and talk to us directly, and we can do this through praying to him. It could, be ex whether, it could be that we're expressing our gratitude to him, showing our gratefulness, asking his advice, confessing our wrongdoings, or asking for forgiveness. Luke chapter 11, uh, verses 1 to 13 says... One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples, he said to them, When you pray, 
say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one answers, the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything, I tell you. Even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you, for everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And as I was reading this, I was thinking about it, especially the last verse where it says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the hope? give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. I was thinking, I remember a few months ago, it was Christmas in December, and everyone here, you give gifts, you receive gifts from the people that you love and you cherish. It could be your family, your friends, whoever it is. And because you know them and you love them, you know what they want and what they would want to receive, and you give it to them. And it's saying, even though you, as a sinful nature in, in you, you're able to give good things to other people. Imagine how much more God, who is a perfect being, is able to give to you. And uh, verse 9 to 10 says, So I say to you, ask, it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So Jesus is saying, always just come to me when just pray and because God is always waiting, the one who knocks, the door will be open. So if you go to God with whatever you feel like you have as a burden or you're going through something, God is always there for you. However, this doesn't always mean that everything that we pray for would be answered or in the time that you expect as well. God will provide your needs over your wants. For example, if the lottery is coming up, I can't just say, yeah, God, let me win that. It doesn't work like that. However... Uh, God knows the, the needs, the things that you need in your life day to day. James chapter 4 verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So it's just emphasizing the fact when you pray, pray humbly, but also realize if things aren't answered immediately, it doesn't mean that God doesn't hear you. It just means maybe things will be answered in his time and when you're not expecting it. I remember a few years ago when we were at New Day, uh, there's always one night where they pray for healing for people. It could be you're disabled or it could be that you have a physical problem on the day. And they were bringing people up from previous years who were healed and saying what they, they were healed from and how their lives were bettered. And then I remember then I was praying personally for myself because I have hearing Hello? Okay. Yeah, so I remember at New Day, I was praying for myself at the time, and there was other people around me praying for me because I have hearing difficulties. And all, at the time, uh, and still now, the prayer hasn't been answered, and I still have that problem. And I remember afterwards, Didi came up to me, and she was saying, just because you haven't been healed at this time, it doesn't mean God doesn't hear you. It doesn't mean that he's not uh, watching over you, wanting the best for you. And although she said that to me, at the time, I couldn't help but feel a bit low. But then I remember the next day, there was a session where it was all age groups from, uh, I think it's 11 all the way to the youth leaders. And I saw a boy, he was much younger than me. And I could tell he was in a, in a worse condition than I was from the type of hearing aid that he had at the time. And he was much younger than me, but he was still dancing, jumping, singing and praising God. I remember looking at myself saying, Martin, what are you doing? Because... 
just because it, it hasn't been answered, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be uh, down on yourself. It doesn't mean that uh, God isn't with you. If other people who are much younger than you can see this, what are you doing? So then I just use that as an example to say, just because your prayers haven't been answered, it doesn't mean that God isn't with you. Uh, the third point that I wanted to mention is faith. Our relationship with God and his son Jesus Christ is founded on the fact that we believe in God by the grace of God. We believe that Jesus is our Lord, Savior, and Master. Jesus owns our being by virtue of his death on the cross, paying his bloodshed for our freedom. Him defeating sin and Satan on the cross and by his resurrection made it possible for us to enter into his kingdom eternally. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about the things that we do not see. Although we physically were not there when Jesus died on the cross, we have faith and we believe that it happened and that's the reason why we are able to have eternal life with him. And John chapter 3 verse 16 says, everyone knows, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his, only one, his one and only son, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And again, this is just to stress the fact that it says whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life with him in heaven. So all we need to do is just accept what Jesus did on the cross for us and believe in that fact, and we can have eternal life with him. That's how much God loved us. He was willing to sacrifice his only son just for us, for us to continue to live, for us to have eternal life with him. And Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10 says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the, obe and the, ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of, us, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that the coming of ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So again, I, I wanted to mention how it says we are not saved through the works that we do. Who we are doesn't matter. We are saved because of the work of Jesus Christ. It's nothing anyone can say, okay, yeah, I'm going to heaven because I've done this. It's, but do you believe in the fact that Jesus died on the cross and rose again to save us from our sins. If you do believe in that and you live out your life accordingly, that's what will get us into heaven. Uh, however, a faith that does not function, that does not produce the good work, is open to question, is it alive or is it dead? Because if you claim to be a Christian, but your, life, your lifestyle doesn't reflect that, then are you really what you say that you are? James chapter 2, verses 14 to 17 says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. We can't claim to be believers but still give in to the things of this world. It makes us a hypocrite. Uh, James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So again, it's just important to 
live your life in a way that pleases God if you're saying you're a Christian because then you call yourself into question if you're not doing that. And I think it's the King James Version. It says, in the first verse, it would say, uh, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Again, saying, do the things that you claim to be and don't just listen to it and say that's what you are. Uh, The final point that I wanted to mention uh, of how we can live our lives to accept the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross is to deny ourselves. Leading on from the importance of faith, what I mean by denying oneself is to not give in to sinful desires that we face every day, everywhere, and the thoughts that we carry with us at all times, including our bed. Especially as young people, we shouldn't give in to the desires of flesh, be it how we respond when someone wrongs us, be it sexual desires, be it not giving in to temptations like drinking excessively. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. As I've mentioned previously, if we're a born-again Christian, we have to strive to build a changed life that, that shines Christ in our being. If there is a mismatch between our character and who we are and how we carry ourselves, we, we, call ourselves, well, we become dubious Christians. When we start applying the word of God into our life, it actually creates question and admiration in other people's lives that can give us a chance to evangelize and converse with other people about God too. Additionally, this verse also says, this is your true and proper worship, which could mean that denying yourself is one way in which we glorify our God. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 to 27 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. People have asked me before, isn't Christianity just a bunch of do's and don'ts? And I've always responded to that question by telling them Christianity is so much more. It's about everyone's individual relationship with God. It may seem like do's and don'ts to other people. However, I see it as God grabbing me by my hand and leading me. And when we have a personal relationship with God, these things seem like things that we like to do and things that we enjoy doing rather than just ticking off a checklist. And it also uh, makes us want to imitate it more and more. So overall, the point that I wanted to get across is that it's important for us to live our lives in such a way that is pleasing to God. It's all good and well to say that we're Christians, but we have to back it up with action as well. And I'll just leave it with, with this verse. Uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 says I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot I wish you were either one so because you are lukewarm neither hot nor cold I'm about to spit you out of my mouth I just wanted to leave it on that verse so that we can just keep that in our minds as we live so I'll just close in prayer now Lord I thank you for this day I thank you for bringing everyone here I pray, Lord, that I thank you for sacrificing yourself on the cross for us to have eternal life with you. I pray, Lord, you help us to keep that in our minds as we live our lives going forward. I also thank you, Lord, for all the baptisms that are going to take place today, all these people taking a step in their lives to become closer to you as well. In your name I pray. Amen. Um, Thank you, Mahatam, for sharing the Word of God for us. Uh, So, yeah, we're going to continue with the program. So now is, I'm pretty sure, all of the people that are getting baptized, I'm sure they've been waiting for this moment that they can watch their uh, testimony videos. Uh, So these should be played on the screen. Uh, So, yeah, we'll just watch that. (laughs) 
My name's Sophia and I'm 16. I want to get baptised to mark my personal identification within Christ. A verse that spoke to me is, I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. Hence why I chose the word forgiven for my t-shirt. Baptism to me signifies my new journey of faith united in Christ and renouncing sin by giving my loyalty and service to God. Hi, my name is Joy, I'm 16, and in all honesty, I've been waiting a whole year to do this, but in that year, I've taken the time to get to know God a little bit better. And there are two verses which I hold close to my heart. Psalms 139 verse 10, which reads, Even there, your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. And Romans chapter 8 verse 31, which reads, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? These verses taught me a lot about faith and about how God has already done his part. And all I need to do is accept his love, his mercy, his kindness, and his greater sacrifice, Jesus Christ. God has taught me to stop stepping back in fear and start going forward in faith. And that his plan for me is greater than anything this world offers. So today I've decided to get baptized as an act of declaring my salvation and because I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Hi, my name is Professor McConnell. I'm 16 years old and I accepted Jesus Christ my Lord and Saviour when I was 12. I'm so grateful to have grown up in a Christian household and I can only ask God to bless my parents for raising me by his word and setting me on the right path to him. Baptism to me is a declaration of your faith in front of the congregation and I want to be baptised today because there's no reason to wait. In Romans chapter 6 verse 4, Paul says, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Jesus was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Hi everyone, my name is Deborah, I'm 16 years old, and today I'm excited to talk to you all about why I would like to be baptised and the significance behind baptism itself. Growing up in the church, I always heard the word salvation, and it led me to wonder, what is salvation truly? I discovered that salvation is the act of being saved through Christ who died for our sins and that once he died we were fully cleansed from past, future and present sin. Upon reading Romans chapter 1 verse 17, I learned that the only way to be put right with God is through faith alone and that the only way we can receive this salvation is through actively believing in Christ. As I grew older I found myself more drawn to the Bible whilst also obeying his commandments through loving my neighbours and forgiving those who have hurt me. My journey with Christ, I must admit, has been somewhat turbulent at times, but during these times of weakness, I've seen that God's love is strongest and he has constantly been there to provide peace in the storm. As I progressed in my relationship with Christ, I've learned salvation is ultimately gained through faith with action. And today I feel that once I'm baptised, it will only bring me steps closer to the plans God has set for me. It will open up a new life as I become born again through him. Hi, I'm Nodo Shonas and I'm 17. Um, I remember in one um, service when I was like 14 or 15, we were talking about um, God and him sa sacrificing himself on the cross. And I just remember, just thought, oh my God, he actually loves us so much. And it was in that moment, I was like, he is my savior and he is going to be my savior in the future. So, um, and then later on when we were learning, uh, we were introduced to 1 John 4 verses 10, which says, This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an anointing sacrifice for our sins. And it just reminisced with me and I was like, yeah, he really does love us so much. And baptism for me was a way in which I could just get closer with God and declare my love to him and not just through worshipping and going to church but also just through baptism as well. Hi my name is Mercy and I'm 17. I decided to accept Christ as my personal saviour when I was between 13 and 14 years old. Baptism to me is a symbol of my faith and relationship with God. I would like to get baptised today so I can publicly declare to myself and others my faith in Christ and how through him I, made, I am made new and as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is in new creation. My name is Dan Samuel. I am 16 years old, born in Sheffield with an Ethiopian ethnic background. I decided to accept Jesus when in my life when I was 10 years old. And I gave myself the opportunity after learning enough from the Bible about the wisdom of God's intentions. To me, baptism is about dunking your future into the river marks of faith, then being lit out from 
of the water ascending from sin. I didn't I didn't choose baptize baptism because I wanted to, but also because I had to do it. Because if God decided to give me life, then I think it's right for me to do what he wants what he wants me to do it as he wishes. My name's Nahon, I'm 18 and I'm gonna get baptized today. So one verse that's resonated with me is Mark 16, verse 16, which says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. To me, bapt baptism means that I've turned away from my old life of sin and to a new life in Jesus Christ. It means I'm publicly identifying with the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. It means that I'm openly joining the ranks of those who believe in Christ. My name is Jordanos Jonas um, and I'm 19 years old. Um, I accepted Jesus Christ as my saviour uh, at the age of 13. Today I have decided to be baptised as a display of my faith, that I am becoming a new creation in Christ and set free from any chains of sin and offering um, my life to, to God. Having the privilege of knowing God and experiencing his works in my life, I can say that nothing ever, can ever amount to it. Um, everything in my life has always led me back to Christ. Um, as my saviour, I find peace in his presence and am saved from everything by God's grace. So today I've decided to take this step in my faith and leave the old me behind, um, put my life in God's hands and have the rebirth of my spirit where I enter a new life and become a renewed disciple of his kingdom. Um, hello, my name is Bethel Gurma and I'm 17 years old. Um, my parents are born again Christians, so I've always had a relationship with Christ, but I decided to accept Jesus as my personal saviour in 2019. Um, so for me, baptism is like a symbol of rebirth. So we die to sin and we resurrect again to new life when we go in and out of the water. Um, during baptism, there's an inner purification and it allows us to continue living for Christ and it distinguishes us from others as a temple of God. So I've decided to get baptised because I believe it will strengthen my walk with Christ and it's obviously an official declaration and it will allow others to like recognise me even when I go into the outside world as a follower of Christ um, through my actions inspired by the Holy Spirit. My name is Benjamin Gama, I'm 15 years old and I decided that I wanted to be baptised this year because I feel, like I, I feel like this is a choice that I want to make to get closer to God. Um, I feel like this is a chance to be born again, obviously, and um, I think that this gives me an opportunity to become a better Christian. And being baptised is something that I've always wanted to do. And I recently, want, I recently accepted Jesus Christ because I want to follow the footsteps of Jesus and I want to be a good Christian. So hi, my name is Jonathan Zero. I'm 15 years old and I'm going to be baptised. Uh, as a lot of us have, uh, we grew up in, I grew up in a Christian household and I've been raised by two lovely parents who inspire, inspired me to become a better Christian. But I've been taking it more seriously over the year and a half uh, and I feel like uh, that baptism is the next step in me getting closer to God. Uh, so baptism to me, it symbolizes how I can, it's just a step closer to God, but I'm really excited for it and yeah. Hello, I'm Abigail Hanok. I'm 16 years old. I attend six, the first year of sixth form. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior very recently with my full heart, but I've always had a closeness with God since I was 13 years old. Baptism to me is a protection against, against Satan. But it's also a part of my journey to put up my cross like Christ did. I also feel, feel it as though it is the right time for me um, because I think I've been procrastinating it for, for some time. So I think I'm ready because I know more about it. Hi, my name is Abigail Jonas and I'm 16 years old. Um, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Saviour when I was 15 years old. And to me, baptism is a way to like devote myself to God and make religion my top priority. And um, like, I just want to accept Christ into my life and let him take a hold of it. Hello, my name is Yoda here and I'm 17 years old. I decided to accept Christ as my Saviour from a very young age. However, recently I truly understood the meaning of opening your heart to him. I also only felt the power of the Holy Spirit recently and it enhanced my faith. Baptism to me is declaring my faith to the world 
A Bible verse that truly spoke to me was Mark 16:16. 16, 16. Whoever believes and baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Hi, my name is Gideon. I'm 17. I've accepted Christ from a very, very young age. And for me, baptism means it marks the start of my new life of Christ. Hello, my name is Philan and I'm 18 and I decided to accept Christ when I was 16 years old as my personal saviour. I think that being baptised is when I can accept Christ as my saviour and a way to strengthen my faith. I would like to be baptised because I believe it's the next step in my journey through Christ. Um, hey, my name is Joshua Abraham, um, I'm 15 and um, I was a dedicated Christian when I was like um, 13 and um, my parents are the ones who brought me up into it because they're very strict on Christianity. And what baptism means to me is like, um, they take two things, one like about salvation and two about like repentance. And um, I always thought like um, we need to be baptized for like to be saved. And um, the verse that I found about it was like in Ephesians chapter one, verse 13. And it said like, you are, um, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and made one in Christ forever. So like, um, I thought like before I was learning about baptism, I thought you had to be baptized like many times when you, was, when you have sinned, but not now like, after reading this, I've learned it's like a one time thing. And you just like repent afterwards and just learn to like, um, be like a better Christian basically. Hi, my name is Jonathan and I'm 18. I've decided to accept Christ as my Lord and personal savior because there's no other way but Jesus and I've come to that realisation recently around October and I feel like baptism to me is a public declaration to the world, to everyone that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Joseph, I'm 15 and I'm getting baptised this year. I think to me baptism is both a declaration of my faith but it also is a way for me to kind of internalise my acceptance of God because I believe it kind of gives me a place to look back on if I ever you know, feel doubt about my faith like any time in the future of my life. I can look back on when I was baptised next week. I can look back on that and I can remember how strong my faith has once been. And I hope that getting baptised will kind of give me this strong anchor point for me to remain in faith for hopefully the rest of my life. My name is Tamar and I'm 17 years old. And I've decided to get baptised to today because um, I feel like it would strengthen my relationship with God and it will also help me to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit as well. And I feel like by getting baptised, the devil will understand that I now have a strong relationship with my God and whatever he has planned in the future to do to deter that won't work. My name is Daniel. I'm 15 years old. And the reason I want to get baptised is because I want to renew my life and take away all the sin I've done in my past and get close with God and start a new life, yeah. My name's Isaac, I'm 16, and baptism to me is like new life, like when Jesus was buried and he came back to life, it represents sort of turning over a new leaf, becoming closer with God and kind of just strengthening my relationship with him. And I want to be baptised because uh, I want to be closer with God, I want to explore all the ways of Christianity. I want to, I just want to have a better relationship with him. My name is Saron. I'm 17 years old and I gave my life to Christ a couple of years ago. Um, growing up in a Christian household and in the church, I've always known and been taught that God exists, but I decided to get baptised now out of obedience to God due to my personal belief that Jesus is my saviour and because I felt his presence now more than ever. What baptism is to me is an important step in my walk with Christ, as it is a way of publicly declaring my commitment to God and my faith in him. And it's a way of showing that I am a new creation. As 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. I want to be baptized to symbolize the start of my new life. As in Romans 6.4, it says, we were therefore buried with Jesus through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Hello, my name is Ruth Lemmer. I'm 17 years old and today I stand before you to give my testimony in faith. 
and to declare my commitment to follow Jesus Christ through baptism. Like many people being baptised here, I've always been taught about God and Jesus and about baptism growing up. But it wasn't until recently that I truly began to discover the depth of their love for me and what privilege baptism is as a sacrament. One of the verses that spoke to me on my journey to baptism was Galatians 3.27, which says, For all you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. This verse reminds me that through baptism, I'm not only declaring my faith in Christ, but also being enshrouded with his love and divine protection in my everyday life. This stood out to me particularly as a young person. Um, as a young person, there are many things in this world that are weapons formed against you. And by getting baptised, the Lord promises his protection and his love, um, his protection and his love throughout my life, dispelling any trepidation I've had in, in when initially facing baptism. I wish to be baptised as a symbol of my faith and my commitment to Jesus and leave my life of sin behind. Romans 10.9 says, If you declare with your mouth that, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I made the decision to accept Jesus, Jesus as my Lord and Saviour and to make him the centre of my life, publicly declaring my faith in him. Thank you. So my name's Rebecca, I'm 18 years old now and I came to Christ during lockdown uh, when I realised that my life didn't feel complete without Christ and um, in Zoom meetings with the 15 plus group I was able to spend more time reflecting on the word, um, thinking about Christ and coming to my decision. Um, so baptism to me is real life proof of a change inside and I'd like to demonstrate to the people that I know that I believe Christ died on the cross for our sins and that I've accepted him as my Lord and Saviour. My name is Fabiola, uh, seven, I'm 17 years old. Uh, I gave my life fully to Jesus Christ last year, a uh, new day, um, when he opened my eyes and heart and food and fulfilled me with that, with the Holy Spirit. It kind of like overwhelmed, overwhelmed me, but like it made me understand his love, that he cares for us throughout every struggle or even just, you know, normal life and yeah. Hi, my name is Yasu Manyo and I'm 17 years old. Growing up in a Christian household family, I decided to accept Christ as my Lord and Saviour at a young age. Baptism for me is a way to be reborn in the name of Christ, leaving any life of sin behind. Today, I'd like to take a leap of faith and further strengthen my relationship with Jesus Christ. Hi, my name is Caleb, I'm 17 years old and I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour for a long time now um, and now I've concluded this is the time for me to get baptised. Um, so for me, baptism is a symbol of a new life as a Christian. We bury the old life and we are resurrected to walk in a, to walk in a new life ahead of us as a Christian. Um, I want to be baptised as baptism declares that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and it's my act of faith and obedience towards Christ. Hi, my name is Joel Johannes and I'm 17 years old. The reason why I want to get baptised is because I want to support my family, having a great time in my life and making everyone happy so that I want to stay positively and not negatively to other people so that I can make people happy as well. The, the, the reason why I'm getting baptised as well is that um, I want to refresh my memories, my mind and staying positive in my life. Hi, my name is Melat Fischetu and I'm 19 years old and today I've decided to get baptised because to me baptism is an act of obedience to the Lord. Um, Jesus says in John 14 to be, to, if you love me, keep my commands and the Bible states that we should be baptised and to baptise each other in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, as well as that, baptism is also um, a public declaration of my faith in Jesus and as well as that also a commitment to follow Jesus for the rest of my life so that's why I'd like to get baptized. Hello my name is Sarah Jonas. I'm 15 years old and I always knew who Christ was but never knew him in a personal way however recently I found an interest in God and wanted to build a relationship with him I figured that baptism would be a good way to start I believe that doing this is symbolic of my relationship with Jesus that is growing throughout the years and also using this to publicly declare my faith to God. 
I pray this that I pray that this will impact my life in a positive way and take my relationship with him to the next step. My name is Salam and I'm 21 and at age 14 I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour. For me, baptism means to be born again and it's a reminder of Jesus' sacrifice. I can live in peace knowing that God guides me and I can trust his plans for me. And for that, I believe that God has led me to this day and to this next step to be baptised just as Jesus was and declare my faith, serve and put all my trust in him. My name is Victoria, I'm 20 years old and I accepted Christ as my personal saviour at the age of 15. To me, baptism is a gift that Christ has given us. It's a way of leaving our old life behind us and following him in his ways. I'd like to be baptised because as a believer, I would like to be set free and obey Christ's command in Matthew 28 verse 19 so that I can be set free and receive the salvation of Jesus Christ. Being baptised will help me strengthen my faith and be filled by the Holy Spirit. My name is Mekli, I'm 21 years old and I accepted Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Saviour when I was 16 years old. For me, baptism is the opportunity and decision to put Christ at the forefront of everything you do in life. I want to be baptised because I believe this is the next chapter that God wants me to take in my life. Galatians 3 verse 27 says, All who have been united with Christ through baptism have put on Christ like putting on clothing. Therefore, I hope to apply this to my life and follow Jesus in his ways. Hi, I'm Ryan Kasai and I'm 16 years old. I grew up in a Christian household, so I was exposed to and gave my life to Christ at a much younger age. And for me, baptism is about officially declaring your love and commitment to Christ. Ani sumi hana takle balalo kita Jesus ada ing mohonun aminye lamat amat wasinyalo adis akal lamelbas sul lamamsal atamakalo mutun natun saun lamamasker atamakalo Jesus kita no. Sumi masarat kasab balalo Jesus Kristus yegel ada ni hulu o Takkan begini, tak makallo. Yesus Kristus dalam kemas memazam urut cinc das tamara cah. Aba bol bermen fasik dus ader gacu atau gacu. Dalam kemas murti ader gacu selale. Enam Yesus Kristus dalam mutena dalam tenasa. Tama tu dalam tenasa kan nama nala. Semai masalah ti balal zihu yang menor le nawari nai. Balal terdar nai, udah tu jodoh cinc nai. Zari lemah tama kesemata, juga betam dasi yang lainnya. Kita Yesus Kristus surasu betagbari asalnya ni lemah kata, ia kafal lainnya muaga. Badam barik gila manor na lemah redat, fakadanya hanya mati cahlo selazim semua ikbar. Walau zibe tak kesan kamu tau jamro ya, ya lawan ya tak kata tak murt saat anak aku ikhlo kerja mohana itu. زاری یه تمکتن لامت امک تازگاهش چه تمرد و چون تکاتیان لو باولت کفلت سه تو تن تمرد و شمالت نو انگاری تمکت لامت امک به وقتی استم کت تل کامیت من تنو نا گیتای سوسن یه وقتی آدای عاد جيك تقبل كوهلا، كزيبو على تمكتو عديس ما النتي مساتين سلهنا، ينبرين أروجي ما النتي تيجي لك كرستوس لما مسل أروجي ما النت متقل سلع لبينو يتقبل كوت كذا مهلا رمو يبكرستان فيز كجيتا يسوس قال ما نور ودفيت بملو بسطامي أسون مسيء بزو فتنا وتشيل بموسد زج جوني بتأم دستاني عليه انقدي عدي سوم عن نتيجة عدي سو هني بيسوع كرستوس فيز لما نور الزجاجتي دستاني عليه سمي التنشيع سوم بارلو Yes, Kristus yang sangat besar dalam masa ini, dalam umur ini, sesuatu yang sangat penting. Dan kita mesti 
Um, okay, so yes, uh, let's just clap again for everyone that's getting baptized. So now, as we kind of move on with the program as well, um, I'm going to invite everyone that is getting baptized, if you guys could just come up um, and just stand across here. Um, and then we're going to invite uh, Gashlag Gasa, the elders as well, to come up on the stage and pray for everyone getting baptized today. So everyone getting baptized, please come up onto the stage. Hello, Shimagil Leochu Odefit, Bukkabaru, Gaitai Varkachu. Ah, Bazi. Ah, Bazi. Eh? 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 These are the people who are going to be baptized and walk with Jesus, follow him all the way. This is a special moment. We have to praise the Lord. We have to praise the Lord. Lord brought these people forward, touched them, converted them, made them his followers. They are going to confirm that through baptism. This is great. This is a wonderful. Now, remember, the congregation will pray for these people. The elders will pray for these people. We are all going to pray for these young people and the adults who are going to be baptized right now. Father, Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. This is a special day. It's a resurrection day. It's the day God reconciled with his people. He created peace with his people. He brought them back to him. Father, thank you. Thank you on this reconciliation day through resurrection. You are giving new life to these people who have accepted you and they are confirming through baptism. Thank you, Lord, for creating peace with all of us.
Thank you for giving us opportunity, Father. God, I praise you for your everlasting love, for the eternal life you have given us. Lord, you want us to live this life, to show it practically, to practice, to be practicing Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, to practice Christianity in reality in deeds. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You are faithful all the time. Have won the battle through your crucifixion, death, and resurrection, giving us eternal life, Father. Thank you so much. Father, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 11, the old self was crucified with Christ and now the followers of Jesus have risen with, with him in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Lord bless our sons, daughters, friends as they are being baptized today. Praise the Lord. Glory to Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Obviously, we are moving to, you know, to the, we are starting the process of water baptism. Thank you. Okay, then. Uh, thank you, Gashtaka, sir. Thank you, all the elders. Um, so, yeah, uh, we are going to start with the baptisms now. So, if you guys um, go to the room behind. And then we'll start calling you guys out by name. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sit down, please. Um, so the elders are gonna be calling people out by name. Um, also, we would kindly ask parents, um, if it's possible, if you guys could um, take pictures or take videos um, from where you guys are sitting, just because of the lack of space. Um, but please don't worry, because we have two very professional photographers that are going to be taking pictures um, of everyone that's going to be getting baptized. Um, so Didi will be taking pictures. Uh, we're going to have people from the media team that are taking pictures as well. So there will be pictures for you guys um, to take home. So uh, yeah, just please try to take pictures from where you are so that the area doesn't get crowded. But um, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, we're going to start calling people out by name to get baptized. So Sophie. Abigail Henock.
Abigail Henock. Abigail, by the testimony you have given us, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Abigail, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glenn, by the testimony you have given us, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Benjamin Girma. Benjamin, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bethel Girma.
Better, by the testimony you have given us, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dan, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Daniel Mituku. Daniel, by the testimony you've given us, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deborah <laughs> Malaku. Deborah, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Fabiola <laughs> Casa. Fabiola, by the testimony you have given us, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Gideon, by the testimony you have given us, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isaac Hapte. Isaac, by the testimony you have given us, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Iesu Emmanuel. Yasu, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jonathan Aberra. Jonathan, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jonathan Zeru. Jonathan, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joseph Salomon. Yosef, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Josh 
Abraham. Joshua, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joy Baringa. Joy, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Caleb Emmanuel. Caleb, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Maclet, Holy. Oh, sorry. By the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mela Tishatu. Melat, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Merci, Abraham.
Mercy, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nahum Salomon. Now home, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nardos Jonas. Nardos, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Precious McConnell. Precious, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rahel Kahasai. Rahel, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rebecca um. Lama. <laughs> Rebecca, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ruth 
لما <laughs> Ruth, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Saron Alamro Saron by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Saron Jonas. Saron, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Salam, Dawit. Salam, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sophia Bainala. Sophia, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tamara Mituku.
Tamar, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Victoria Atre. Victoria, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yodahe Yilma. Yodahe, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yoel, Johannes. Yo, well, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jordanos Jonas. Jordanos, by the testimony you have given us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
اتنش یا زو Adanish Tay was at was at Toy Kalmus Kernet, Yetanessa, Bob Bold, Bumfusk, Dusim, Natam Kala. Messeret Paisa. Masarat Bayisan, Basat Achuya, he was Miss Kernet Ali Tanasab, Baab, Bawald, Baman Faska Dusum, and Natam Katala. Mespin Walter Johannes. Masfil Walde Hornison, Cassata, 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 Casa
መሰረት ካሳ በሰጠች የቃል ምስርክነት የተነሳ ባቦል በመንፈስ ቅዱስም እናጠምቃታለን ያዘው ነሽ ያዘው በሰጠችው የቃል ምስክነት የተነሳ ባቦል በመንፈስ ቅዱስም እናጠምቃታለን አሜን 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 ክብር ጌታ ክብር ጌታ ጌታ ይክበር እሱ ብቻ ይክበር ኢየሱስ ጌታ ነው ወገኖቼ ዘምሩለት እና መልከው ክብር ጌታ አሜን አሜን ክብር ጌታ በሰማይ በምድር አንተ ብቻ ክብር ስለሰጠህን ጊዜ አባ አባ ተመስገን አንተ ብቻ ክብር ሃሌሉያ ሃሌሉያ ዛሬ የተንሳየቀን እግዚአብሔር ተመስገን ክብር ጌታ ሃሌሉያ ሃሌሉያ ጌታ ይክበር ወገኖቼ እና ክብሮ ይሄን ጌታ እና ክብሮ ይሄን ጌታ ስላረገልን ስላሰበን ዘላለምን ሕይወት ስለሰጠን ሃሌሉያ በቤተ ክርስቲያናችን በመእመናን መሐከል በልጆቻችን መሐከል 
ጌታ ሲራከበረን እናክበረው ክብር ጌታ ሃሌሉያ
ስለነበረን ጊዜ ባክ ስለተጠመቁት ወንድሞቻችን አያቶቻችን ስለነበረን ጊዜ እግዚአብሔር ይክበር እግዚአብሔር ይሄንን ወቅት አዘጋጀ እግዚአብሔር ሙሉ ክብር ይውሰድ አሜን የታወለ ሙሉ ክብር ይውሰድ አባታችን አባታችን ጌታ ሆይ አንተ አስነስተ ከሞት አስነስተ ያለን ኃይል ፕሮባ ጋርና እና በሰግነሃለን እና መልካሃለን ጌታ ተመስገን ስለነበረን ጊዜ ተመስገን ጌታ አምላክ ወገኖቻችን አሁን ከዚህ ተነስተው በሚሄዱበት ሁሉ ጥበቃ ይምዛላች ይባረኩ ዘመናቸው ይተባረከ ይሁን አሁን ጨርሰና በጌታ በኢየሱስ ክርስቶስ ስም ታች ሄደን እንግዲህ ፈሎሽፕ እናረጋለን ጌታ ይባርካችሁ ተባረኩ ወገኖች thank you thank you youngsters thank you the stage people thank you people who baptized and who supported us oh thank you thank you ተባረኩ 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 ወገኖቼ በሰላም